All right, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, so today we'll be talking a little bit about uh, robotic uh, inguinal approaches. I don't have any financial disclosures. Um, so as we've heard before, the uh, MIS um, approach to hernia repair was introduced back in the early 90s, and um, its adoption has been um, relatively slow compared to other laparoscopic procedures. Um, as we mentioned before, approximately uh, 75 to 80 percent of inguinal hernia repairs in the United States are still performed through an open approach. When we look at uh, other procedures such as lap cholecystectomy, uh, we wonder uh, why that had such a great um, adoption. Um, we feel like the operative field and surgical anatomy is identical and that uh, facilitates learning of the procedure. In laparoscopic hernioplasty, uh, though, those, um, you have a completely different um, approach in perspective of pelvic anatomy, and you also have um, limited working space, which uh, causes that to have a more difficult um, learning curve. So an interesting thing that I learned also is the film expression of a steep learning curve. Um, if you actually have a steep learning curve, it actually represents a rapid progress in learning. Uh, so, uh, looking back at all of the, uh, the cases that do talk about um, the laparoscopic learning curve, um, you know, there's a wide variety in the a number of cases to either achieve um, OR time stabilization or have equivalent outcomes or decreased um, complications. Um, I was hoping that when looking uh, at these cases or at these papers, the um, more recent ones started having lower uh, numbers, but then they seem to be going back up again. So. Um, then uh, we've seen the international hernia guidelines before. Um, one of the statements that they make, which is a weak recommendation, was that TEP did have a longer uh, learning curve than TAP. So TAP may be um, a little bit easier to, to master. Uh, this brings us to the robotic platform. Um, it's a very common uh, platform that's available to many surgeons. Uh, approximately one in four hospitals now have uh, access to at least one of these robots in their OR. There are uh, multiple reported benefits, including enhanced visualization, improved dexterity, ease of suturing, and surgeon comfort, which can all play a role in inguinal hernia repair. When we look at the data, though, of uh, robotic over laparoscopic, uh, there's really no uh, clinical benefits that have actually been proven. Um, you have similar recurrence rates, uh, no uh, difference in pain, and no difference in cosmesis, and there's even higher costs associated with the procedure. The pros that we do think about, though, are is there a shorter learning curve and is it um, easier for, um, uh, on the surgeon overall to perform? Uh, so uh, we've seen this study also. Um, the cost uh, for the um, robotic approach is higher, uh, uh, over $2,000 uh, per case just for a unilateral uh, inguinal hernia. Um, operative times um, have varied depending on the study, but um, some of the more recent ones still show a uh, prolonged operative time over the laparoscopic uh, cases even after you've mastered the, um, or even after you've gotten over the uh, learning curve in the robotic cases. Um, robotic cases also have uh, been shown to have a higher um, rate of postoperative skin and soft tissue infection, um, and this is thought to be largely related to uh, longer operative times. So um, looking for guidance and whether or not we should adopt the robotic platform, look back to this 165-page um, uh, compendium of the International uh, Guidelines for Hernia Management. And uh, if you search for the word robot, it's found at the bottom of a table only once in the whole page. So we, this really didn't um, afford any guidance to us. So who should really be adopting this procedure? Surgeons who are already performing laparoscopic inguinal hernia repairs, uh, surgeons who have exposure to laparoscopy, or surgeons who are novice uh, to the MIS approach altogether. Uh, so let's say you don't perform laparoscopic inguinal hernia repairs at all, and you're wanting to adopt the robot uh, as a platform to perform more MIS hernia repairs. Maybe there is a clinical benefit. This turns out to be the same um, uh, scale here uh, for the open versus laparoscopic. You're going to have better access to the difficult and recurrent groin spaces, uh, including femoral hernias. You're going to have lower recurrence rate, quicker recovery, less pain, better, uh, better cosmesis. Um, so let's look at the uh, experience of um, surgeons who adopt uh, the robotics in their practice. Uh, this particular study uh, was a single surgeon with 20 years of uh, laparoscopic tap experience and no prior robotics exposure, uh, 50 cases in four and a half months. Um, ultimately, uh, comparing to the prior uh, laparoscopic uh, uh, cases, there were no differences in clinical outcomes. 
and looking at the uh, learning curve, um, they would say it's maybe around 25 cases if you're counting uh, the time to uh, bring the operative case uh, length uh, to that of uh, equivalent of the laparoscopic cases. So in this study, they were actually able to um, not have prolonged OR times. Um, in a larger study where there were um, uh, 18 surgeons who adopted um, the robotic inguinal hernia um, approach, um, they really only examined one surgeon um, for um, the uh, learning curve using an analysis of OR times. They showed a uh, um, 11 cases, they were um, over their learning curve. Um, the, we didn't really glean much uh, else from the learning of the other surgeons because the number of cases that they performed and their prior exposure is highly variable, as you can see in there. Um, so I also looked, and there's no studies out there with um, open surgeon, only open surgeons um, and um, their outcomes and their learning curve. Uh, so. Um, I can't make any conclusions about the learning curve for those um, who are novice to both the robot and the um, MIS inguinal hernia repair approach. Um, so I wanted to see who is doing uh, robotic uh, surgery and um, so, uh, a study by Dr. Alanikov uh, shows that m the majority of these uh, cases are actually coming from people who uh, are already doing laparoscopic cases and that the, um, it's not really having an impact on um, the open numbers that like people um, had suspected. And this was also true for other uh, general surgery procedures like colectomy and cholecystectomy. Uh, so I wanted to look at our institution since we adopted the robotic inguinal hernia repair technique in 2013. We've had steady progression uh, during that time. And uh, so we have uh, two different groups of people that utilize it, ones that have been kind of fellowship trained. And where are our robotic cases coming from? They're coming out of that laparoscopic pool. Uh, we already have a pretty high utilization in that group of MIS um, approach. Um, then we have another set of surgeons who um, are not MIS trained and have a high utilization in, of open approach. Uh, however, after adoption of the robotic approach, they still are um, largely coming from the um, laparoscopic group. So a couple considerations before adopting the robotic technique. Um, if you're a low volume MIS surgeon, do you ever really reach the learning curve? Um, and now you're going to add an additional way of doing it. Um, so now you have open, lap, and robot. Are these um, skills uh, transferable in, um, uh, between uh, technologies? And, uh, or would utilizing only one of the platforms help you to achieve the learning curve faster? Um, and then if you are moving from an open approach to a, a robotic approach, um, should you be necessarily learning a new technology and a, um, a new procedure all at the same time? So I think you should have a high comfort level with inguinal hernia repair um, before you have a foray into um, the robotic approach. Um, and there are other downsides, as we mentioned, including costs. Uh, so this is the same um, slide I showed earlier um, and it was also in the laparoscopic talk. Uh, the basic recommendation, uh, since the results between TEP and TAP are comparable, um, really the um, recommendation is to use what's, um, what you feel comfortable with and why I think you will use a robotic approach is what you're, you will have had exposure to, including your skill, education, and experience. What you feel comfortable doing, when you feel comfortable doing it, you're gonna have good outcomes and also what you have access to. Um, I have some colleagues that are in uh, other hospitals that have access to robot uh, block time, and that's where they can put cases on, so that's why they're doing them that way. Um, and um, so additional reasons, performing uh, procedures such as inguinal hernia to gain more experience with the robot so you can ultimately do more complex oper uh, operations. Uh, opportunity for trainees if you have those uh, with you, and um, some people come asking for that, so there's also some advertising pressures. So in conclusion, uh, um, currently most cases are coming from the laparoscopic pool, um, and there's no data on open surgeon's learning curve on the robotic inguinal hernia repair technique, so, uh, so we can't make any conclusions on that just yet. Um, so right now I'm putting it in the hype category. Thank you. <laughs>